who was uh, injured uh, on the ankle in the game number six here. They've dropped two of the younger players, number 23, Lebedev, and number 24, Bodnov. They're both 21 years old. Another 21-year-old, number 14, Shadilov, a defenseman, and their backup goalie, number 26, Poskov. Replacing them tonight, the number two, Gusev, and number four, Kuskin, two veteran defensemen. And the line of number nine, Blinov, uh, is back in order with number 16, Petrov, and Mihailov. And number 27 will be the backup goalie, Zidelnikov. And number 12, Mishikov, is replacing number 17, Harlamov. We're waiting for the uh, uh, teams to... Uh get their uh, starting lineups. They haven't uh, indicated who they're going to start with yet, but the uh, officials, uh, Rudolf Bata, so there's a different combination tonight from the last game, and Uwe Dahlberg. Uwe Dahlberg is from Sweden, and Rudolf Bata is the Czechoslovakian. Bata is 15, and Dahlberg is 14. Just saw Dahlberg there, number 14. And the teams are uh, now going into their, the uh, Soviets are going into their usual huddle near their own blue line. Canadians uh, are just skating around, warming up. They haven't indicated who's going to start, but Esposito is going to start in goal. Tony Esposito will be in goal. Kretschak, of course, will be in goal for the Soviets. Looks like the Clark Henderson... Line is going to start. Mark, just wait now. There's, uh, they've still got them out there. Esposito skating around. But it looks like Clark, Henderson, and Ellis, the way they're moving into position. Clark, 28, is at center. Trechak is warming up there. He's quite an acrobat. Now Parisi uh, comes out. They had their starting line out there. And apparently they're going to switch that in the last moment. The Clark line is coming off. Now it's going back again. So there's a little indecision right from the start. There's a look at the scoreboard, Foster. And of course, the script is in Russian, which makes it easy to follow. From the face-off, Canada to the left, Soviets to the right, and it's Savard clearing it over on that far wing as Candace said, four men in, Trechak let it bounce back of the net. Ellis is trying to clear it out. It shot out in front. Zagankov cleared ahead to Maltsev, coming down with Mikhailov on the left, and he was knocked over and failed to make the pass. Clark played it over on the far wing. point, the goal is knocked off its uh, props there, the Canadian goal, and the play is stopped as a result of it. They knocked it right off the uh, the props. Well, as I pointed out before, the goals here are not fixed on uh, pins that are about six or seven inches high. They just have a spike on the bottom of them. And of course, if anybody does bump into them, they come off their, their mountings very easily. From the face off, the puck goes to center ice. It shot over to Ellis on the right side who gave Raglan a bump and then went offside on the play before it could be cleared over. They're starting off very slowly, and the Soviets immediately make a change. Kuskin and... And... Uh, is going to stay out there. They keep changing all the time. They start out and then come back. Gilbert on the right wing for Canada. Rattel is at center ice. And Dennis Hall is over on that left wing. The defense stands fast. Rattel cleared it back to LaPointe. LaPointe going up with a pass to Dennis Hall down that left side. A shot right on. Kretschak way out in front of the goal screen. Stopped that one and it held it off his chest. But the chant that we can hear in the background is the Soviet chant. And it is Shaibu, Shaibu, which means the puck. Ready for the faceoff to the right of the Soviet goal. Passes back to the blue line. The point lost it. And this is great. The Soviets going down that side. The high loft was seen off in front. The shot off the top. The Canadian goalkeeper and went to the corner. It's off to one side. Rattel going back to his own net. Petrov after him. Shot out to centers. Going right on down off the Soviet 
players, Dick Gusev going in behind to get a number two for the Soviet to clean off nine. Clean off. Gets to the blue line, now Gusev helps him. Gusev going in on the right side with lead off with the high loft. The pass comes to the side, here's a pass in front, and it went wide. As it was more of a shot than a pass. Puck comes out to center ice. Gusev passing back to lead off, and he's back pass to Mihailov, and Canada recover at center ice. Dennis Holmes failed to clear a pass there, spatted back at center ice, lost to Petrov and stop there at the defense. A quick pass to center ice. There's a trip there. There's a high loft trip to the hole. And that'll be the first penalty of the game to the Soviets. The high loft. This is game seven of the Canada Soviet series from Moscow. The high loft is off for tripping at the two minute mark. They've played two minutes of the first period. No score in the game. Now Park coming up with the Canadian team having the odd man, Esposito number seven. Bernoulli on the right side takes the pass, is thrown off stride by Shadron. Now Greasy over on that far wing, 22, going into the corner, shooting it back to the net. Off to the corner again, Park knocking it on the boards to Parisi, who's in the corner, back to the blue line. Knocked to the side, intercepted, and the Soviet break out. The big shot going down. And he was skated off on that play, couldn't control the puck when he had a chance on a one-on-one -on -one break. Now the Canadians coming back at center. Esposito shot it over the line. Lyshenko cleared it out. And Mishikov came out to try and recover. Park playing it safe. And they're starting off in a very cagey way. No score in the game. Barnwaye dumped his fan, but knocked the puck into the corner. Mishikov couldn't recover. They shoot it down the ice. Leapton driving it down as Canada goes back to recover. Pat Stapleton to Park, number five. Park clearing it back to the net to Stapleton. Esposito's in goal for Canada. Stapleton skating up at center ice. Played it over on the wing. A very slow move, and it's offside on the play. Foster, I might point out up until uh, now in this series, the Soviets have had 25 power play advantages and they've scored four times. Team Canada has had 15 power play advantages and they've only managed to score one goal. And if Team Canada is going to win tonight or possibly in the last game, the power play becomes ever more important. Ellis is taking over on the right wing with Henderson on the left. Desposito is at center ice. And the Soviet holding up the game while they get a new stick. They're still a man short, but they haven't been hard-pressed so far. Petrov, number 16, is coming out for the Soviet to help kill off the penalty. Mishikov had been out there. He stays out there with him. Now Esposito waited too long, didn't get a shot away, he tried to drill one, and was hooked from behind. From in the corner, they jam there. Petrov covering his check. That was bumped by Henderson. They shoot it out off the boards. Park is going back for Canada. Park coming up on the right side. Cleared it over on the far wing to Henderson, to Esposito, a shot went wide. And the puck goes into the corner. They're trying to get into position there. Henderson into Ellis in the corner. A pass right in front of Esposito, she scores! Esposito! Canada shot right from the side. Canada trying to keep the pressure on. Clark had a shot at Petjak. It was stopped. It's left there. Passed right in front of his own net. Malkus cleared on the side. 
and it's missed by Mishikov. Now Volstead trying it again. He's eat it off. And the left of the puck, trying again on this left side. Mishikov shot it to the corner and back to the net. Off to the far wing. Clark failed to get away. Stapleton lets Clark try it again. A dump pass to Stapleton. He sidesteps his check, coming up slowly at center ice. Fake the shot, passed over to Mahovlich. A drive by Clark went wide of the net when he was right in front. Goldsworthy is in the corner trying to dig it out. Goldsworthy is back to the goal trying to center it out. And there's going to be a penalty call here against two. Mahovlich talking to the Soviet player and shoving him around a bit. With the score, Canada won, and the Soviets no score. This is game seven from Moscow. From the face-off, the team are five aside. The Soviet break out on the left wing. Maltzweb takes the drive and hits the screen. The bounce is over on the side. The Soviet try to center it out. Mattel giving it to Burke with the center ice. Gilbert rushing in with Saganzov. Saganzov recovers the puck. He checks, and again, Gilbert coming in, trying to pass, hit a skate when Mikulov stopped him. Rattel gets that puck back to Burke with a shot. It's right in front of the net, a scramble. And the Soviets cover up with Raglan right in front of the net. Canada set up good puck control on this play. And you'll see Rod Gilbert walks right into the goal crease, tries to screen the shot from Gary Bergman. Trichak, he goes down. He keeps his pad spread well out along the ice. Face-off is going to be to the right of the Soviet goal. Esposito from Ellison Park, the scoring play at 4.09 of the first period. Peter Mahovlich and Mishikov are serving a penalty for roughing. Puck is back to the goal. And Gusev is trying to come out on the right side. A clearing pass. The Soviets sent two men up. Petrov getting it over. A shot by Mihailov was handled by Tony Esposito in the Canadian goal. Canada starting back again with a forward pass. Quite a different game from the last one. Practically no real hitting so far. They're playing it very cautiously and fairly slowly. A quick pass to center. Berkman intercepted. Carnoye now rushing up on that left side as the Canadians change. Esposito coming out with Carnoye. Rattel give it a rest. Long pass to Gustav goes astray. It ends up in the Canadian zone. Park recovering. Park played it back to the goal. Mihailov centered it. It rolls right back to center ice. Petrov coming back to get it. Petrov from the Soviet side. Step part YA goes in alone. Off balance. Ducked over when he really went off stride. Down that far side for Phil Esposito all alone. Lost the puck. The Soviet playing it over on the left wing to Gusev. Gusev at center to Petrov. Back to Gusev. Here's a pass. Nobody was there. And that shows you the passes don't always work. A roller out at center. Ice. Here's Esposito getting in. He's... Unable to control the puck, they jam against the board, and it's covered by Kuskin against the board, and the face-off will be to the right of the Soviet goal. one nothing for Canada, and the team's at full strength. But their coach, uh, Sevalod Bobrov, might have outsmarted himself in that game on Sunday night because he put a lot of his younger players in there, and now he's got the older ones back. With the score, Canada won, and the Soviets don't score. This is Game 7 from Moscow. The puck is in the, at the Canadian blue line. They're starting it again. The team's at full strength. Yakushev cleared over on the far side to Anderson. Anderson getting loose in front of the goal. Let a shot go. Bounce off a leg. And Liapkin goes in back to the Canadian goal, centered in front. And the pass is knocked down. Bill Esposito taking it over onto the far board. It's finally cleared out on a pass over the right side to Cornwallie, who skates up with Bill Esposito going offside on the play. Another change of players. And uh, Harry Sinden is... Moving, as usually, back and forth behind that Canadian bench. John Ferguson is sitting down this time. 
There's Bob Ross, the coach of the Soviet team, cool and collected, uh, at least he appears to be. And you can see uh, John Ferguson there just passed in the center. And Baltsev going down that far side with Mikulov. Here, the puck goes into the corner. Baltsev trying to center it out. Henderson covered him. The puck goes behind the goal center right in front of Ragulin. It goes over on the far side on the pass. He waited too long. And Canada break out at center ice with Clark. Lobbing it to the Soviet line. Ragland stopping it. Soviet attack again at center ice. And Mishikov failed to get anywhere. Clark passes on the wing. Intercepted again. Clark goes after his man. Chasing him back to the net. He shoots it down the ice. Mishikov let that one go right down the ice. And fall back to the Soviet zone. So far, this has probably been one of the tightest games in the whole series. Although they're not using the body a lot, as you say, Foster, they are staying very close to their checks. And, of course, this makes it very difficult to take a pass cleanly. And as a result, we are seeing quite a few icings and offsides so far in the game. I notice Bob Ross has decided to take a walk, too, but he goes at a one mile an hour to, to Harry Sinden's 20 miles an hour behind that bench. They're making a change. Clark coming off. He's a bit tired after that rush, followed by Ellis and then Henderson with the helmet. Out for the face-off. The puck comes to Raglan. Clean off. Started down the left side. Couldn't uh, control the puck, but knocked over. Petrov played it right on to Stapleton. Stick. It's up to center ice. Gilbert made the pass. The puck goes into the corner to Rattel. He couldn't recover. Petrov. Shooting it out at center ice, Mihailov going up with Lenov, and he was checked without getting a pass. Gustav fell in trying to cover the play. Gustav goes into the corner. He's checked on the play. Gustav goes in to help. It hit the referee's skate, giving Gilbert a chance. He shot it in front of the goal. Here's a drive in front of the net. Gustav was down. It hit the screen. And the Soviet break out to center ice. Leadoff is on the left. Petrov made the pass. And it was offside. And we're getting much better refereeing in this game so far with Dolberg and Bata handling the game. There's a look at assistant coach Kulagin. And between the two of them, Bevrov, Bobrov, excuse me, and Kulagin, they map out the strategy and all the training for the Soviet team, and they share responsibility about equally. They're making frequent changes in this game. 10-17 left in the first period. 1-0 for Canada. Goal by Esposito from Ellison Park at 4.09. Buck is shot into the Canadian zone. Park going in back to the net. Trying to come out on the right side. He couldn't. Yakushev stopped him. Anderson tried to set her out. Shadron is on that line with them, so Anderson is an extra forward. They carry into the corner. Anderson is the only remainder of the so-called kid line for the Soviet team. We see Bob Rob seemed to outguess himself on that last game by putting the kids in. Well, we see that Uni Dahlberg there from Sweden, he jumped right in when he thought there might be the sticks up or a, a stray elbow around. He blew that whistle right away, and the referees obviously have been instructed don't let the game get out of hand. Call it closely. And as I say, as long as they're consistent throughout the game, the players don't mind. Canada was about to make a change. The play goes right on. Yakushev coming down flat. Here they go! Yakushev for the Soviet. Well, whoever said that the Soviets can't let the slap shot go, they've got to be wondering right now, Foster, Zakashev pulled away from the Canadian player. Then a slap shot go that caught Tony Esposito. He had yet to get ready, and it went right between his legs. The Soviets have tied it up. Alexander Yakushev with a blistering slap shot. Yakushev really let that one go. And it had Esposito great beaten all the way. It was about a 35-foot shot. Shadron gets the assist. Shaq Yakushev the goal. 
10.17 the time, and now it's a 1-1 tie. Puck rolls to center ice. Sagankov was stopped. Now Ragelin played it on the left wing. A drop pass. Here's Baltzev coming in with Mikulov. And Henderson got a stick on it. Couldn't get it out. It's docked by Ellis to Henderson. Henderson over to Ellis. It was partially deflected. Puck goes into the corner and Clark couldn't get it. It's out to center. Baltzev recovering with Bergman backing up. And the shot went wide. That goal has perked up the Soviet attack. Here the Soviet coming in from back of the net and he's bumped down. Mikulov was knocked over. Park covers his man. Going to be a penalty on the play. Park with the score 10 to 1 and the Soviets won. This is game 7 from Moscow. Ready for the faceoff. There was a penalty given out on that play, but uh, no one has gone off. Uh, they went to start the play, and now they're going to uh, apparently call the penalty. Uh, that's an odd one. They uh, gave every indication the penalty was going to... Chadlov is going to get the call. I rather Mishikov. Mishikov. Park was in on that last mix-up. But Mishikov is going into the penalty box. So the Soviet gets the lone penalty. He pointed at Park first. So it looks like a change of judgment on that one. Park and Mishikov had mixed it up. The holding penalty to Mishikov. He's number 12 for the uh, Soviet. And he generally kills all penalties. It's a 1-1 tie as the puck is shot out at center ice. LaPointe playing it over to Park. Ellis is out there with Henderson and Phil Esposito. As the puck is carried in front of the Soviet goal, Ellis partially broke it up, but Raglan shoots it down the ice. Park going back to get it with Petrov after him. Park fights for that puck. Recovers back to the net. Park skating up slowly. Pass to Henderson offside. And it's called at the Canadian blue line on the far side. A 1-1 tie with 8.15 remaining in the first period. And 124 left in the Soviet penalty to Mishikov. Soviet have had three penalties. Canada's had one, and that was a double penalty, along with Mishikov, who's had two penalties. The puck is back to the Canadian goal. Ellis tried to relay the pass to LaPointe. Hart failed to get up there in time, falls into the board to cover up with Petrov, but the Canadians recover, and it's now Henderson coming back for Canada with Esposito on his left, Ellis on the right. The pass goes astray. Is shot back to the blue line, Park keeping it in. Esposito is covered. They jam into the corner with Ellis over skating it. Petrov tried to roll it out. Park keeps it in and couldn't get the shot. Sagankov drives it down the ice. Gilbert comes out. Here's a mix up here. Over on that far side. Bill Esposito is saying plenty to the Soviet player who waved him away. It was Mihailov, and Phil Esposito is going to get a penalty as a result. Whatever Esposito said to him, Mihailov didn't seem to understand or didn't care anyway. 7.21 left in the first period. 12.39 is the time of the penalty. And Canada's lost the advantage. Cross-checking penalty. Esposito for cross-checking. Mahailov 
Now Yakushev, one of their better players, goes into the corner for the Soviet, into the far side. Goldsworthy, he's the extra man, is clearing back of the net. The 1-1 one -one tie, and the puck is still in there. Five aside, Shadron is trying to center it out. Yakushev is waiting there for the pass. He shoots it right back behind the net. The point recovers. The point goes back to the goal. The Soviet are full strength. Canada now a man short. A quick pass to center ice. The point going in on the defense, right in close. And Lyapkin steered him off to the side. They jam there on the board. Another pass goes to Stray, and they're starting to warm up to the affray. Lyapkin running back to his own blue line for the Soviet, turning again. Yakushev on the left, number 15, goes over the line, the long, lanky player. The puck goes to the corner. Table and failed to clear. Lyapkin takes the shot. Got it over to Yakushev, right in front of the net. And it's cleared to the side, but not out. Here's another power play. Zinchenko took a drive. And Esposito deflected that with his, glove, with his skate. Yakushev set Zinchenko up again. Over into the corner to Shadron. He shoots it to the open corner. And the Canadians shoot it down the ice. Petriak having to stop that long drive. And it is still a man short at center right. A long shot by Lyapkin. And a hard drive that time. Esposito had to be very good on the stretch on that particular play. Puck is back in the Soviet zone. Luchenko over on the right side to Yakushev. And here's uh, Esposito stepping on the ice. And the teams are at full strength. 5.19 left. In the first period, a 1-1 tie. It's interesting to watch the Soviet power play. They set up what appears to be a double slot man. They've got their prime scoring man is about 15 to 20 feet out in front of the net, just at around the hash mark of the two circles. But then they move a defenseman in just inside the blue line, and they can get a shot from either of those two areas. Both are prime scoring areas. Ready for the face-off. The puck comes right down to the Soviet blue line. Gusev, number two, going back to get it in front of his net. Cleared to Mihailov, who missed it. Stapleton for Canada. Dumped it on the boards to Dennis Hull, who shot it over the line. Gilbert tried to commit on the right side. Lean off for the Soviet at his own line at center ice. Over on the left side to Mihailov. Skated off by Gilbert. Rattel helps him out back of the net. Cleared to Dennis Hull, and Rattel goes back to the goal, checked on the play. Now Gilbert in the corner, failed to get out, but stopped by Blinov. Back to Gusev, another pass, a shot in front of the net goes wide. Gilbert covered Blinov, who still is fighting for it. He finally got it back to Kuskin. To Gusev, a shot is deflected, and the Soviet are... Getting that passing play. There's going to be a penalty call here as the referee has his hand up. And here's the call for hooking. And it looks as if uh, the Canadian player Bill White is going to get the call. Bill White on the defense with Pat Stableton gets the penalty for hooking. So now the Soviet will have the odd man again with 4.15 left in the first period. 15.45 played in the first period, a 1-1 tie. And there's Bill White in the penalty box for Canada. They rule it as interference. And they call is going to be, you know, the face-off is going to be made on the rim of the circle in the Canadian zone. Bergman uh, finally went sliding to the side there just to cover up on that play. Clark and Ellis are trying to kill off the penalty. Park and Bergman, the Canadian defense in front of Esposito. 
A high loft in front of the net as the puck is not dropped fairly. They called it immediately when Petrov uh, made his move first and then juggled the puck right up to the referee's hand. Lutchenko is standing near the blue line, number three, always a dangerous player. Puck goes wide of the Canadian goal. Bergman tried a forward pass and shot down the ice by Ellis. And Sagankov is going back of his own goal for the Soviets. A rink-wide pass to the far side. They're moving up at center as Mihailov tried to get Petrov's pass. And it goes right back into the Soviet zone. Luchenko after it. Luchenko in front of his own goal to Vikolov. Vikolov at center with Petrov. He gets that puck right in that goal right here. He gets the score. It went right in to score. Drawing the goalkeeper out. And it was a beautiful goal by Petrov. Great puck control by Petrov. He almost has the puck poked away from him. But look at him fight for control. He gets the puck again and slips it right in behind Tony Esposito, who by now has slid way out of the net and is well out of position. A beautiful goal by Petrov to give the Soviets the lead. 16-27 time of Petrov goal to give the Soviets the lead 2-1. And here we see him coming up. Now Petrov, he almost loses it but hangs on and slips it by Tony Esposito. Now the Soviets coming again. A long shot. Yakushev went racing in for the rebound. And it failed to click. So far, the Canadian team haven't had the zip that they had in that last game and the Soviets Seem to be playing right back to their top form. Two to one is the score for the Soviets over Canada. 3.20 left in the first period. Coming up in our first intermission, we'll get a look at the reception at the Canadian Embassy yesterday. We'll get some more fan reaction of the game and the series. And of course, Howie Meeker will be along with his analysis. Ready for the face-off. Two to one for the Soviets. Chadron is going to take the face off, roll it near Esposito. The puck goes to the far side. It's not cleared out when Chadron breaks it up. Yakushev was checked promptly by Cornwaye and then is given the puck at his own blue line. That's him at fifth, number 15. Now Anderson, one of the kid lines, failed to get anywhere. Canada bring it right back, Cornwaye to Esposito. It's rolled to Esposito, a shot right in front. They scramble, he's right first. Oh, a pile up there with Parisi trying to lift that one over the goalkeeper, but he was able to cover it. Parise made this play all possible by getting that puck through to Phil Esposito. Esposito gets it across in front of the net, and Canada has several good scoring chances, but Tretiak keeps an eye on the puck and manages to stop the shot twice. Ready for the face-off to the right of the Soviet goal. Back to the blue line. The shot is wide. The Soviets scored that goal to put them in front with Bill White in the penalty box. The penalty was at 15.45. The goal was at 16.27. Petrov making a beautiful play of it to draw Esposito out of position. Now they're trying the same spot. Savard is standing there practically at center at the blue line. It's cleared over on the far side. It's back to Savard. He fakes the shot, turns. There's going to be a penalty call here. Esposito shoots. He scores! Esposito fires that puck and it's all tied up again. Esposito let one go from about 30 feet out. Again, his teammate gets Esposito the puck and he's right in the key scoring area. Bill Esposito with that quick wrist shot. Drills one by Tretjak. If you notice, Tretjak is well back in his net and doesn't have really a good chance on the shot. We see it come up here again. Savard makes a good move here, beating the defenseman, gets it back to Esposito, and the quick shot beats Tretjak on the low side in the corner. Well, that scoring play will be Esposito from Savard at 17.34. Making it a two-all tie. And this is going to be a tough one all the way through. Now it's Savard clearing that pass on the far side to Peter Mahomlich. 
and it's offside. Apparently, Parisi was also given an assist on that goal. Esposito from Savard and Parisi. Savard made a terrific move on the Soviet defenseman. He gave him a little head fake. He spun around by him, and he hit Phil Esposito with a perfect pass. And Phil Esposito can get that puck away as fast as anybody in hockey. And he caught Tretjak trying to set up, moving back into the center. There's a false start on that uh, faceoff. Goes where he is on the right wing now with Phil Esposito and Peter Mahovlich. So they're juggling their lines around a bit. And they're adding heavy checking every chance they get. Petrov is now at center for the Soviet. Blinov is on the left wing, number nine. Gusev and Kuskin on the defense. Four is Kuskin. It's over the line, into the corner. They race for it. The puck is loose. Lulesworthy is trying to center it out with Petrov jamming him against the board. He picked on a tough one to come around. Here's a drive wide of the net. Esposito was nearly in front. The Soviet breakout was Lenov making the pass right in front of Mihailov. The shot hit Esposito and hurt him. A rising shot caught uh, Tony Esposito on the chest, and I think it hit him on the neck. And the game will be delayed. He's coming He's over, as you see, and holding his throat as he comes over to the bench. There's no question that uh, Tony Esposito was hurt there. That was a high rising shot by Mihailov who came in a good six to 10 feet offside taking that pass from his teammate and walks right in and let a high rising shot go. Esposito, even in jumping up, still caught the puck well up into his chest or up into his throat and I'm sure that that really smarts. We see him skating back to the net so he's all right. But he certainly felt that when you can see him rubbing his neck and there's no question he didn't have much of a chance on that shot to get out of the way of it. It was going well over the net, but it just happened to hit him as he tried to go up. He's gamely going to continue there. He got quite a nasty rap as it bounced off his chest and hit him on the throat. Face off is at center ice, a two all tie, a minute and 38 seconds left in the first period. Savard shot it to the corner. Out to Phil Esposito, who couldn't get a clearing pass going, and it went to the Soviet zone, where Blinov ahead to Mihailov, 13 at center, over on the left side to Petrov. Petrov centered in front and went wide of the goal. Back of the net, Phil Esposito. Cornway is way up here near the blue line, waiting for a pass that didn't arrive. It's carried in on the right wing by Parisi, offside. And the face-off is going to be made at the Soviet blue line. 106 left in the first period, a two-all tie. There's a look at some of the cameramen along the boards getting coverage for their local station. From the face-off, the puck goes to the boards. Yakushev, 15, plays it to his defenseman. It's a pass that's knocked down, another try by Lachenko, who shoots it into the Canadian zone. Stapleton is trying to clear. Yakushev stopped it, tried his pass that was intercepted. It's knocked over on the right side to Ellis. Ellis is written off by Lachenko. He still has it, though, but he has it against the boards. And Clark was right there to help him out. Bill White and Stapleton are on the Canadian defense at the blue line. A good play by Ronnie Ellis coming right up the ice there. He had to fight off that check all the way from the blue line in. He kept an eye on the puck the whole way. He fought off the check and eventually held it against the boards. Mark Henderson and Ellis out there for the Canadian team as Anderson shot it out to center ice. Shadron was unable to do anything, and it went off Henderson's glove into the uh, over the boards. I think he caught it and just dropped it there on the far wing. So the faceoff. Referee Dahlberg is facing off. The puck is dropped. Clark had it on his skate. Yakushev knocked it back to his defense. He received a whole a real bump there from Henderson. It's over to Ellis on the right wing. Ellis six going into the corner. Liatkin knocked him into the board. Henderson goes to help. 
Then Henderson took a shot. Kretschak stopped that one. And they shoot it out to center ice. Bill White going back to get it. Shadron touched the puck as the siren goes to end the first period with them ending it in a two-all tie. It was a real battle all the way through. Esposito scored first. Gakashev followed by Petrov and Esposito. With the score, Canada two and the Soviets two. This is game seven from Moscow. Two minutes longer on that uh, intermission there before they came out on the ice. Now they're getting ready, recapping that first period. 4.09, Esposito from Ellison Park for Canada. At 10.17, Yakushev from Shadron for the Soviets to tie the score. Then at 16.27, the Soviets took the lead. Petrov unassisted while Bill White was in the penalty box. And at 17.34, Bill Esposito getting his second goal with Savard and Parisi assisting. It's a two-all tie as they start now in the second period and it's a tight hockey game and so far it has been quite as exciting as the last one it's a two all tie Soviets to our left Canada to the right they're underway with Petrov's pass being blocked by Savard Dennis Hall is out there on the forward line with Rattel and Gilbert Rattel broke up a first rush, then Gilbert passed to Dennis Hull to Rattel. Rattel to Dennis Hull, right in on goal! And he dragged that puck too much and missed the net on a good try. Again, Dennis Hull broke up the rush before they could get out. Gilbert goes in to try and do some forechecking checking as they bottled a Soviet up. Then the Soviet player took a dive there as Gilbert Checked him. There'll be a penalty call on it. The play keeps on going. Guskin is going in back of the Canadian goal. It shot over on the side. It rolled right in front of the net. Canada shot it out. And it's called. And the penalty will be handed out. With the score, Canada 2 and the Soviets 2. This is Game 7 from Moscow. A hooking penalty to Gilbert puts the Canadian team a, a man short in 59 seconds played of this second period, a two-all tie. The puck rolls out at center. The Soviets have the odd man advantage. Lechenko, number three for the Soviet, to Vikolov. Vikolov played it to the blue line, tapped over on the side to Petrov, going in with Mihailov. He's into the corner. Petrov has that puck back to the blue line to Lechenko. The shot, it's a foul in front. And it was knocked there by Bill White to the corner, who covered his man and goes loose again. Mihailov hooked Pat Stapleton. The play goes right on, and it's finally carried out over the line by Phil Esposito, who scored both Canadian goals. Phil Esposito dragging that puck with Peter Mahovlich. He finally knocked over, and then Petrov leaned on him as the puck slides into the Soviet zone. Mihailov going back to the net. The Hyloff coming over on the right side, a long pass away offside to Mikulov, who didn't even make a move on that. And the Canadian team still a man short. There's a good look at Ronnie Ellis as he skates out onto the ice. He'll take his turn, killing the second half of this Soviet power play. A good effort by Phil Esposito. Puck control is all important when you're a man short. And Phil Esposito managed to rag the puck for at least 15 or 20 seconds, and they're very critical. The penalty has 106 remaining to Gilbert. Canada still a man short, as now the Soviets have made a change. Canada has Clark and Ellis out there trying to kill off the penalty with Bill White and Stapleton. Shadron was knocked down by Stapleton, who played well up the Afton, 25. Goes in back of his own net as they try to regroup. Maltsev starts away up to the blue line at center ice, showing a burst of speed. Trying to go in on Bill White's side, was forced into the corner. Gets it back to the blue line, a long shot bounded off the leg, and Clark lobbed it down the ice. Petriak just uh, stopped it. The Apkin going into the corner, playing it over on the left side, gets to the blue line, slowed down, passed over on the right side to Yakushev. Yakushev is covered and taken in on the board. 
They jam there, and the play is stopped. And Canada covered up on that play so that there's no loose puck. Again, it was Ronnie Ellis. You can notice how Ronnie, when he's in the corners there, there's not a coach in hockey that won't tell you if you're not sure what to do with the puck, trap it along the boards, but you're never going to get yourself in trouble if the whistle blows. And Ronnie Ellis is playing a very sound defensive series over here. Mark and Berglund now on the Canadian defense. It's Berglund failing to get that puck. The Soviet recover. Back to the blue line to Lachenko with shot. And as Lazita went down to cover, Ellis to Clark. Clark lobbed it down the ice, and it's Lachenko going after it, watched by Clark. He shoots it over to Liapkin on the far side. Ahead to the blue line, a three-man break in center ice. Coming up over the line, he cut back again. Shadron is forced back into his own zone by Clark. Shadron takes the pass from his defenseman, cleared it to Ilamov. It's into the corner as the Canadian team are now at full strength. Bear is back on the ice. They shoot it around back to the Canadian goal. Bergman tried to go it away. It's kept in there on the right side by Kuskin. Shadron is knocked sideways. Mihailov went after it, couldn't reach it. Canada clear it out with difficulty. And Shadron's pass is knocked down by Bear, who forces it back to the Soviet line. Soviet held it check. They're trying to change players. On the goal, Phil Esposito stepping out there now. Bernoyer rushing over on that far wing as Petrov trying to get a long forward pass. Bergman goes in to cover him in the corner and it's held there for a face off. 15-55 left in the second period. A two-all tie. Canada two. The Soviets two. Canada took the lead. Soviets tied it up. Then the Soviets took the lead, and Canada tied it up all in the first period. Ready for the face-off to hear the Canadian Rooters, and Esposito got that pass over to Parisi. A long shot to Cornwallier was way offside on the play, and it's called back for a face-off practically in center right. The Team Canada Rooters over here come up with a new cheer, Foster. It's called... Da, da, Canada, yet, yet, Soviet. And they've been chanting that throughout all the game. From the face-off, the puck rolls over the Canadian line. It's knocked right back again by Bella Esposito to Savard. Savard's pass goes to the the Soviet coming in. Mihailov into the corner, passes back, a quick shot, and it's stopped there neatly by Esposito. Marnoye tears down the right side with Esposito going in, and he hits the side of the net as he couldn't control the rolling puck. Marnoye gets it from the corner. Center to Esposito, he stops. It rolls back to Esposito, backhanded one wide. Huskin for the Soviet into the corner. Onto the left wing to Sagantov to Petrov. Petrov over the line, closing in the high line. And that was a brilliant save there by Tony Esposito, who covered on the outside of the goal screen. A beautiful drop pass set up Mihailov coming right in behind Foster. And this is a typical basketball move. Once again, the Soviets use quite a few basketball maneuvers out there. Mihailov walks right in. He gets a, a shot away that's not clean. And Esposito had anticipated a harder shot. And he almost had the puck go in underneath his pad. Mark going out there now for Canada. Goldsworthy taking over on the right wing. Replacing Ellis for the moment. A long shot goes over the line. Clark follows up with Goldsworthy, who took a shot. And it bounced off a leg. Henderson is on the right wing. Ellis giving a breather after killing off penalty. Henderson in that corner is covered by Sagantov. Clark was right there, too. And the face-off will be to the left of the Soviet goal. Here's a change for Canada. Stapleton and Bill White. Replacing the point at the bar. There's Clark. No keys at all. Carrying on a car. Save that pick off for the Soviet. Clark and Nikolov fence there for a moment. Canada playing every man up. The pass comes out to center ice. Bill White lobbed it over to Stapleton. Stapleton took a long shot. 
Kutchak failed to clear. Another shot is wide of the net. Now Stapleton getting a chance. He took a shot and just bounced off a leg. Bounced and races after it. Bill White beat him to it. Now uh, goes where they knocked it back in the Canadian zone. And it's knocked ahead by a club. And it's offside. And another change this time by the Soviets. Reese is coming out with Cornwalle and Esposito. And the Soviet has Anderson with Shadron and center ice. Anderson on the right wing. Raglan and uh, Lyshenko are on the defense. A pass to Yakushev there on that left wing. And it's outside again. Yakushev has a terrific reach, a big, lanky, left winger and he can really move that puck six to eight feet every time he stick handles the puck rolls back at center ice the two all tie 1409 left in the second period soviet break up the canadian rush at center ice anderson went in on the right side he just went down there went check i believe he is going to get a penalty for tripping and that looks like a real cheap one with the score, Canada 2 and the Soviets 2. This is game 7 from Moscow. There's a check there right off the bat. Stapleton was hauled down a hooking penalty to the Soviets after Parisi had gone off for slashing at 604. So Anderson gets the penalty for the Soviet who loses the advantage in manpower. That'll be hooking. Six eleven is the time of the penalty. They're coming in with a shot, and it's a long drive by Yakushev, handled easily. Gernwaye trying to come down. They're five aside now. Gernwaye and Esposito fail to uh, combine on that play, but Esposito grabbed that puck. They're five aside. Stolen by the Soviet, Yakushev coming in on the wing and stopped by Bill White after Shadron had nearly put him in the clear. A long pass to center ice. Here's a shot by Esposito that went wide. Renoyer couldn't get the rebound. It's down the far side, closing in over the line. The Soviet player was checked. Stapleton carries back at center, deflected over the line with the Soviet Luchenko to Shadron on the right wing. Shadron at the blue line ahead to Yakushev. He's the dangerous player. Yakushev over that left side. The shot was stopped by Bill White. And blocked. Here's another chance. Right in front of the goal. The shot. And Esposito stopped that one as the absent was able to worm his way in front of the Canadian goal after being stopped on the first try. A good play here by Leapkin. He takes the puck through his skate, gets turned around, and gets the shot right back on Tony Esposito. Foster, what they do so well here when they have four men to four is they spread it right out. They spread out their attack, and they use all of that ice, and it's very difficult to cover this large ice surface with only four men. Ready for the uh, face-off in the Canadian zone. Maltsev, uh, Harry Sinden there just for a moment. And the puck comes over on the left side. They're trying to get that puck out. The Gansoff pass is knocked out by Gilbert. Rattel knocked the puck ahead just after Gilbert was stopped and knocked over. Here's Rattel getting a chance. He cuts back, lobbed a high one that Maltsev takes in back to the Soviet goal. Cut Jack. Stands there guarding the net as Sagankov comes back at center ice over to Maltzev, closing in, Maltzev shoots! Great save there by Esposito, got his stick and skate in the way. Puck is back to the Canadian goal. They're trying to get organized here. They're five aside, but now Canada has full strength. Soviet still a man short. Coming up over the line, offside. And Gilbert was moving in with Parisi there, but was called on the offside. Anderson just came on the ice, too. So now the teams are at full strength. 
11, 49, left in the second period, a two-all tie, Canada two, the Soviets two, three penalties in the second period, Gilbert, Parisi, both of Canada, and Amazon of the Soviets. Clark, Ellis, and Henderson out there now for Canada. Petrov got the draw. Shot it over on the wing, too far for Blinov, who's beaten to the puck by Ellis, who lost it in the corner. Blinov centered it. It's intercepted. Henderson went racing after it, knocked it back in his own zone. The point, clearing to Ellis, who couldn't get past center. Gusev bared at the blue line to center ice. Petrov got his man over. Petrov shoots! And it's about three feet wide. Ellis, after it, finds the pass on the wing. Clark helps him out to Henderson. Henderson shoots! Oh, that was close. As Puchak was able to cover that. Down the right wing for Blinov, closing in. Didn't get a shot. Another try for Mihailov, who centered out his front. Cleared off to the left side. Henderson with Ellis. Ellis tried to reach for that one. It went too far and it goes down and is called for icing. And it'll be brought back into the Canadian zone. What this line of Ellis, Clark, and Henderson does better than any of the lines for Team Canada is they move the puck up the ice quickly and they use all the ice surface. You saw Ronnie Ellis there. Even though he missed the pass, he's right over in his wing and they make the long passes and, of course, as I said earlier, there's not a hockey player in the game that can skate faster than a pass. 10.52 left in the second period. A two-all tie. Canada two, the Soviets two. And Canada must win this game to keep their hopes alive of winning the series. A jamming session on the far wing there. The puck comes down on a three-man break from the Soviets. They carry it into the corner. Yakushev going back to the goal. Centers it to Luchenko. The shot is knocked down. Esposito cleared out. Here's Parisi coming in with Barnwaye. He passed behind him when he had a great scoring chance himself. It's up to Liapkin at center. Liapkin over the line got rid of it. And candidates recover the puck. Parisi playing it to LaPointe, who's covered on the left side. It rolls back to Luchenko. Cleared to the wing. Here's Jackson The shot. Again, it was saved by Esposito. Canadian team shoot it down the ice. Lachenko taking his time to go back for number three. I have to say something about the goaltending of Tony Esposito. He has been sensational so far. He's made several key saves, and I'm amazed at the tremendous reflex and anticipation that Tony Esposito has. He's stopped many very, very dangerous shots that look from up here in Boston like they were labeled, and he's got in front of them somehow. Soviet playing every man up here. Mishikov is now at center ice. And these are, they're throwing in the extra reserves. Vasiliev is on the right wing. He's a defense player normally. The puck is off to the side. Stapleton skates up with a long pass to Dennis Hall. It went off the stick. Vasiliev going back to get it. He's back of his own net. Soviet falling on the reserves. Up to center for Mikulov. Over on the left wing, the shot is wide. Back of the net. Mikulov trying to center it out. Bill White pins him to the boards. Canada clear out. Dennis Hall took the pass. Goes up. Vasiliev bodied him and stopped him. A return rush, Vishikov coming in on the right side with Volsev, slides to Tony Esposito, and is carried to one side and back to the net. Well, Canada watching their moves here. Rattel failed to get away, and Bill White helps him out. Bill White shot one off the Soviet player, and Ragulin got it back to his teammates, and it's called on the offside as the reserves come out again. 9.01 left in the second period. A two-all tie, and you see Raglan's patch from the last game. That's a, a receipt he received from Bill Esposito. Petrov is going to face off with Bill Esposito. Peter Mahomet taking over on the left wing, and Bill Goldsworthy on the right. 
Two all tie, 8.52 remaining in the second period. And it's a tight hockey game. Hasn't got quite the dash of the others, but it's still got plenty to it. It's taken in the corner. Goals where they shot it on the boards, but not out. It's intercepted now, carried up on the wing by Goldsworthy, who's coming in on the right side, he shoots! And a great save there by Trichak there, who came sliding out about five feet in front of the goal tree. A great Canadian attack here, and Bill Goldsworthy gets the puck, he's in good position, he's driving now into a good scoring area, and he lets a terrific shot, but notice how Trichak came out and cut down the angle. From the face-off, Bill Goldsworthy from the corner center to Phil Esposito, who's trying to get a shot. Houston had him covered. Finally knocked out the center ice. Bill Goldsworthy playing it back to Bill White. To Pat Stapleton over on the far side to Goldsworthy. And he just shoots it into the Soviet zone. Houston cleared back to Gusev. Gusev clears the center ice. Bill White brought it in, but it was offside as goals where they didn't have a chance to get out and be on side on the play. The Soviets right there, Foster, with that long, long pass caroming off the board. They were looking for the breakaway pass. That's Bergman there. As they get ready for the faceoff. It's up to center ice. A two-all tie, 8.06 left in the second period. Briefly. Passes back to Bergman. Bergman comes up to center ice. He's up there with Brad Park. A long, easy shot. Butchak stopped it. Houston goes back to the net. A quick pass on the left wing. Soviet sent four men back. Petrov going in on the defense. Here's the shot. Bounced off Bergman. Another chance here. From the side. Gusev centered to Mihailov. Back to the blue line. A hit of skate. Bergman played it out on the left side. Gracie coming down the left wing, tried to center to Esposito, who was knocked in on the board by Kuskin. Here's another chance for Burke, but right in! And he missed the net by about four feet. Seemed to hook the puck. Esposito was mixing it up there a bit, and there'll be double penalties in front of that Soviet goal. With the score, Canada two and the Soviets two. This is game seven from Moscow. Kuskin and Esposito off together for roughing at 12.44 of this second period. A two-all tie. Bill Esposito and Kuskin, the defense player for the Soviet. A quick shot on Kutjak. He covers up. And another chance there. They failed to get a drive on the net. A two-man break for the Soviet. Yakushev got a shot and was knocked over by Park who's trying to uh, lift the brain up on his back. Henderson covered up in the corner for Canada. So they're playing five aside, and the Soviets just seem to attack regardless of penalties. Face off to the right of Tony Esposito. All set to go. Puck goes against the boards. Here's a long shot, hit the the stick and Canada in possession. Park tried to play it to Henderson, who couldn't control the puck, and it goes right down and is called for icing. Coming up in our second period intermission, we have a feature on how the television crew brings you these games. Bill Good will talk to Canadian Amateur Hockey Association President Joe Kriska, and of course, Howie Meeker will be along with his analysis. All ready for the faceoff. Bergman takes it into safety, back of the net, having a hard time getting away from Shadron. He still has it, goes into the corner, failed to shoot it away, it's centered out, and it goes down off the boards, with Luchenko being forced to really move fast. Nick Clark followed in, but was offside, obviously, on the play. With four men each on the ice, of course, it's a big ice surface, you've got more room. The idea is to spread out the play so that when you do get the puck, you have a lot more room to make a move on it. Here's a look at some of the Canadian fans and getting a bit of a back rub there to get ready for some more cheering. 1.15 left in the penalties as the puck goes from the faceoff into the Canadian zone. Savard over to the point. 
Canadian team trying to get organized here to get that puck out. It's cleared over on that far wing. The point goes up with a pass to retail to the point. The point centered it. No one was in close enough. Bill goes where they cleared it back. Here's a shot by the point that went away wide. The Gamkoff is covering Goldsworthy. The two of them scuffle on the board. Uh, nothing really happened, but you hear the reaction of the crowd, the real old-time whistle. I see that Goldsworthy in all of this game, and he's playing very well up uh, up till now. Goldsworthy has gotten a lot cooler in this type of hockey. He's relaxed now. He's not quite as chippy as he was in those first few games that he appeared in. Two all-tie, and... Rattel gets ready for the faceoff. He got the draw. Goes into the corner. Sagankov covered him. Soviet bringing that puck out to center ice. Maltsev going up over the line. Taking a shot. It's wide of the net. It's in the corner of the Soviet trying to get it back to the blue line. They do. Maltsev takes the pass. Trying to cross in front. Left it there on a pass. And Maltsev... Nearly got LaPointe's goat there, and he was going to go after him. Maltsev, back of the Soviet goal. Lobbed one in front of the net. Vasiliev, starting back with a pass before he could hardly move. Sagankov at center ice, over the blue line. Here's a shot, and it bounced off Esposito's glove, way up over the screen, into the crowd, and now both teams likely make a change, certainly the Soviet star. And it's a two-all tie with 5-17 remaining in the second period. I'm continually amazed, Foster, at how well the Soviet players slap the puck. Three years ago, they didn't slap the puck nearly as often as they do now. But when they let one go, it's as hard as any shot in hockey. And that particular one there, Tony Esposito couldn't catch that puck cleanly. He was lucky he even got his glove on it. One second left in the two penalties, and both players are standing at the penalty box. They have the gate open. Now the Soviet player sits down at Kuzkin, and Phil Esposito is still standing up. Face-off will be in the Canadian zone to the right. Clark facing off with Petrov, number 16. The high loft is 13, clean off is 9. Over on the far side, Parisi, Phil Esposito is on, they're both on, and the teams are at full strength. Cornwallier replaces Clark. Back comes the Soviet, broken up by Cornwallier. A quick pass to Phil Esposito going in, he shoots! And his quick pass went high, a rising shot. He didn't get much chance to get that one away cleanly. But Jack cut that one with Phil Esposito, mixing it up again with Kuzkin. Petrak is skating around there. 4.51 left in the second period. A two-all tie. Canada two. Soviet two. Back to the blue line. Bill White took his shot and hit a Nair. Parisi is mixing it up. And uh, Kuskin, who seems to be in a battling mood, uh, dropped his stick finally. I, and now they're shoving each other at every opportunity. With the score, Canada 2 and the Soviets 2. This is Game 7 from Moscow. Parisi and Kuskin are put off together after that scuffle and quite an argument in front of the Soviet goal. The penalties are coming thick and fast. Gilbert got the first one of this period, then Parisi, followed by Anderson, Kuskin, and Esposito, and now Kuskin and Parisi. Yakushev down the right wing, and he failed to get over the line. There's going to be another penalty call against Canada for hooking. But Jack was headed for the bench. Pat Stapleton is getting the penalty. And for the first time of the game, Canada will have two men in the penalty box. Parisi and Stapleton. The referees are a little worried right now that this game is going to get out of control. Down, and of course, Team Canada now is at a distinct disadvantage with two men off because the Soviets need a goal to go ahead, and they're going to really be pressing now with this advantage. An obvious hooking penalty. Face off is going to be outside the Canadian line. Four men to five. 
Can't with Bergman going back to get it. Tried to shoot it away. It's stopped by Lachenko. A pass to Lyapkin. Back to Lachenko. Lachenko number three over to Lyapkin. A shot hits the Canadian player. It's in that corner. The Soviets still keep that puck. Passing it around. There's a shot by Lachenko. Oh, what a save that was by Esposito. Yakushev into the corner. They still have that puck. Back to the blue line. Now to Lachenko. The drive hits Bergman's stick. But they get it again. Shadron. Pass to the blue line. Back to Shadron. Shadron trying to make up his mind where he'll pass it. There's Lachenko's shot. It hits Hart. He lost it. And cuts back to Shadron, who kept it in. They drive it near the goal. Yakushev centers it back. It's to the near the blue line, but they still jiggle that puck all over as if it's on a string. It's again a pass over on the far side of Lacheco, lost it. Bill Esposito finally recovers. Goes down himself. Goes over the line. Not the defense player over, but couldn't get any farther. Return rush by the Soviet, Yakushev. Overstated it, gets it again in the corner. Pass back to the blue line. Sagantov shoots. It's right there in front there as Esposito took the rebound, brings it back. He's trying to kill off this double penalty. It's knocked over the line. Bergman broke it up, and Bill Esposito really golfed that one, and Bergman knocked it the rest of the way. Petrov coming up. Now the team, now Canada, just a man short. As the puck comes over the right wing, 240 left as Parisi dumped a pass and it shot down the ice. Pat Stapleton is on. The teams are at full strength. No Canada weathered that siege. Playing four men to five. Parisi is in the corner for Canada. Jammed on the boards and they're really roughing it up every opportunity. Back in front of the Soviet goal. Zagankov. Made a long, rick-wide pass to Blinoff. Blinoff is forced back, number nine. Comes up at center. Henderson made a run at him, but Ellis fell and tried to avoid him. Blinoff turns with Mihailov. Mihailov into the corner, number 13. The pass came right in front to Gankov. For the Soviet, ahead to the blue line. Three men come up, Petrov at center. Over the line, a pass back to Blinov. Blinov getting in with a shot, and it's caught by Esposito, who grabbed that with his glove while on his knee, and it appeared to be just off the target, and the reserves coming out again. Just a reminder to hockey fans at home viewing these games, you can participate in voting for the most valuable player on Team Canada by sending the name of your choice to box 5050 in Toronto, Montreal, or Vancouver. The winner is selected by the fans who receive the Labatt's Best On Ice Award. Ballots are available from any Labatt representative. The Canadian team recover from the faceoff, carrying it down that far wing. The barn centered in front, but Henderson couldn't get in close enough to get a shot. And there's a shot in front of the goal. Henderson trying to deflect it as... Here's a jamming session with Vasiliev getting a jolt from Ellis with Henderson being knocked over by the Soviet player. They nearly started a flare up there, and it wouldn't take very much to really cause a, a real Donnybrook in this game. They're getting chippier every minute. 119 left in the second period, a two-all time. Canada two, the Soviets two. Nikolov failed to get away. Gusev goes down the far side to Vekulov, who's checked at the Canadian blue line. Canada play that puck out, Clark, but he couldn't go any farther. Now they're hitting each other with everything. Another try for Volksev, and he's wrong as he tried to march through the Canadian defense. Carried down this left side, a heavy goal, headers right in. And Ellis trying to get the pass, but is too far in on the play. Soviet come right back to the wall, the back and he shot it high over the Canadian goal. Back come the Canadian team on a wild rush that failed to get very far. Savard at 
center ice. Twisting and turning, falls. The Soviets get a man loose. Here's Anderson coming in. And it's called on the offside after Stapleton had stopped the shot. 22 seconds remaining in the second period. A two-all tie, Canada two, the Soviets two. In that last minute or so, the play opened up as wide as probably any that there's been. The play's back and forth, back and forth. A lot of heavy hitting, as we can see. Nothing but penalties in this second period. Hill there for Canada first, then Parise for Canada. Anderson for the Soviets. Luskin and Escobedo together. Then Luskin and Parise, and finally Stapleton. The faceoff, Canada gets a draw. Couldn't get past Strutter. Parise tried to pass to Esposito, but he was offside on the play. I think one of the reasons that Esposito and Parise have had so many run-ins with Kuskin is that they definitely respect Esposito's ability in front of that net. And of course, Parise is the man who's trying to get him the puck, so they're giving extra attention to Phil Esposito and Jean-Paul Parise. From the face-off, Yakushev finally grabbed the puck at his own blue line, lobbed it ahead, no one was there. Bill White tried to play it past the Soviet player, lost it, and then the Yakushev overstated the puck, and the siren went to end the period. All the scoring has been in the first period. At 4.09, Esposito from Ellison Park. At 10.17, Yakushev from Shadron. At 16.27, Petrov, while Bill White was serving a penalty. And at 17.34, Esposito getting his second goal from Savard and Parise. No scoring in the second period. With the score, Canada 2 and the Soviets 2. This is Game 7 from Moscow. Teams now are getting ready for the start of the third and last period. It's a two-all tie, all the scoring in the first period. Esposito getting two goals for Canada. Yakushev and Petrov scoring for the Soviets. In the first period, Canada outshot the Soviets 9 to 6. There were six penalties, three apiece. In the second period, eight penalties. Canada had five of them, Soviets had three, and the Soviets outshot Canada 13 to 7, but there was no scoring. The shots are total in the first two periods, the Soviets 19 and Canada 16. Now we're all set. Soviets to our right, Canada to the left, Clark, Henderson, and Ellis starting for Canada. Mishkov is starting at center ice for the Soviets, and it's cleared over the line. Sagankov shot it out. Mikhailov is watching his man. It's cleared over on this right side to Ellis, and he failed to go through. It's back at center ice again on a slap against the boards. Balsev tried to go in. Clark blocked him. Here's Mishkov getting a shot, and it hits Savard, and it's up to center ice for Henderson. Ellis rushing in back to the net. Vasiliev after him. It's grabbed off by Henderson. Henderson coming in front. Here's a shot, and the drive went by. Savard is waiting at the blue line. Here's another chance, a shot, and it bounced off the body and went wide as Ellis let it go. Balsev carried it right back, number 10 for the Soviets, stopped by Savard. Savard lobbed it ahead to Ellis, now to Clark. Clark at center to Henderson. Henderson just couldn't reach that pass and was against the board. It bounces out to Balsev. Clear to center ice. And this is up clear over here. Mitchell getting right in. And Tony Esposito held his ground on that tough one. Puck is shot back into the Soviet zone. It'll be called for icing on a change of players. A two-all tie. They played a minute and a half. But during that intermission, we heard a lot of opinions on how Team Canada should play this third period, so I might as well throw in mine. I firmly believe that Team Canada can win this game if they play sound defensive hockey for the third period and wait for their offensive chances out of good, solid defensive hockey. If they play 20 minutes holding the Russians in check, they might get the chance to win this game. From the face-off, the puck went flying from the face-off to the corner off a leg. It's still in there, though. Mihailov took a shot, covered by Esposito on the short side. 
Bill White going into the corner, watched by Bleedoff. Dennis Hull cleared it up to center ice, and Petrov is now back into his own zone, dropped the pass, the Soviet attack, Kuskin cuts back again, number four, Gusev is with him, tapped it over on the far side, they move again at center ice, Bill White broke that up, Rattel drives it into the Soviet zone, Dennis Hull tears in after it, and it's grabbed off by Gilles Bear right in front of the net. He passed instead of shooting, and Rattel couldn't get it. Now Gilles Bear again. Gilles Bear came up to the side. And scored for Canada. Gilles Bear got that puck off the board, came right around his front, and was in the net. A good play behind the net here by Team Canada. Rod Gilles Bear stepping out from the corner. Now watch Kretschak. He's well back in the net. He has to make a move. Ron Gilbert lets a good backhander go right between his legs. A good goal. The play starts to develop here. Team Canada dumps it in and chases it. All important. You have to chase the puck. Now Gilbert misses it, gets it right across. So Gilbert parked himself behind the net. It comes right out to him, and he buries the backhand right between Chris Jack's legs. Now they're underway with the puck at center ice. Canada leading. Uh, three to two, and they took a while to put that up on the board. Although well, there's no question about Gilbert scoring, and Rattel likely would get one assist at least. But they have some odd ideas about assists in this game. Puck is at center, cleared over on the line. Yakushev couldn't get clear. Esposito takes it in back of the net, and Canada clear the puck out at center. Liapkin going back to get it. Lyapkin is going all the way back, passing to Yakushev. Yakushev in back of the net, crosses over on the right side, pulled away from Parisi. Cornoyer shot it back, trapping his teammate in there, and it's called on the offside. Canada now leading 3-2 to two with 17 minutes and 3 seconds remaining. Well, Foster, I was just informed that a lot of Canadians are going to be surprised when they walk outside the arena tonight. It is now snowing in Moscow, so they've gone from a record heat spell a week ago to snow tonight, and I think we bypassed the fall. From the face-off, Carnoye got his stick on that puck. Now it's over the line, and the Soviets play it safe, going back to their own defense over to Yakushev, who couldn't control it. Park across to Bergman, over to Parisi, gets it back to Bergman, and the Canadian team passing that puck around quite a bit. Puck comes to center ice, Shakashev going in on that wing. Bergman grabbed him, and he seemed to haul him down on the play. Looks like a penalty coming up to Bergman for holding. But the score, Canada 3 and the Soviets 2. This is game 7 from Moscow. Bergman is off for holding at 326, and they dropped the puck, and then they have to do it all over again. Both Rattel and Dennis Hull were in on that scoring play by Gilbert at 2.23. Whether uh, the two will get assists, it's hard to say, but they were the ones responsible. And Gilbert tucked it home, coming in from back of the net. Now the Soviets have the odd man advantage, and it comes back to Lyapkin at the blue line. He faked the shot, cleared it on the left wing to Yakushev, clearing to the side of the net, rolled off to the wing. Maltsev took a swing at the pass and shot wide. The Canadian team finally cleared down the ice. Pat Stapleton driving it down. Phil Esposito and Peter Mahovlich out there to kill the penalty. Soviets coming again. Yakushev down that right wing at center. Shadron is trailing with Baltsev who's going in. And rolling in front of the net. It's loose. The African trying to drive it. It hit a body. The Soviets coming close. Make a shot. It hit the Canadian player. Front out. On the right side was Phil Esposito from Park. A shot is deflected against the screen. And Canada had a few close calls around the net. There's still a man short with Berkman off. Yakushev has stopped. Phil es Esposito grabbed that puck after Park took his man out. Phil Esposito's ragging that puck. Uh, fell on the play when Lyapkin fell on top of him. Back come the Soviet Shadron. Got to the line, was stopped. Esposito cleared it out. Lyapkin tapping it back to Lachenko. Lachenko over to Maltsev in the corner. Maltsev trying to center it back to Lachenko. 
takes a shot. Here's Leapkin getting a shot. And it went just off Esposito's leg. They still keep it in. They're keeping that pressure on. Lushenko takes a shot. Backs up to the blue line. Cleared it to the corners. They're still zigzagging around. Here's a shot. The door! Yakutel standing on the side of the crease. Knocks the puck into the net. And the Soviet have tied it up. Yakutel from Moscow. The Soviets have good luck control on this power play. And they get Team Canada running around a little bit. Yakushev parks himself right to the far side of the net in the goal crease. The pass comes right across the goal mouth. Alexander Rak Yakushev has his second goal of the night. You can see Yakushev. Now he moves over right in front of the goal crease. And bingo, right up into the net. That goal, Yakushev, who's standing right off the edge of the goal crease. From Moltsev, who dug it out to the corner, 5.15, and it's a three-all tie. The puck is in the Canadian zone. That penalty, that penalty cost Canada a goal. That's the second Soviet goal, while Canada's been a man short. So their power play has paid off for two goals in this game. It's absolutely imperative that Team Canada stay on the ice for the rest of this game. There's no question that the Soviets definitely have an advantage when they've got that power play going for them. They've scored a lot of goals Canada in the series. The bar going in on the right side is grabbed that time by Petrov. Turned around. Ellis trying to center. Did. Then a shot bounded off a Soviet body. Goes out to center ice. Cleared over the Canadian line. And Canada dump it or tried to, and it hit uh, Reefy Stick, who's sitting on the Canadian bench. A three-all tie, Yakushev from Moltsev at 5.15 of the third period, with Bergman off. There's the, uh, one of the referees, uh, Rudolf Pata. From the face-off, the puck comes to the blue line. Here's a pass right in front of the goal. And Mikulov was unable to get near it. He goes to the board, lost it. The point tried to clear it out. The Soviets take over. The shot hit a leg. And the uh, goal by the Soviets to try to score seems to uh, have the Canadian team a bit on the run. They haven't settled down yet. Mishikov is now at center ice, number 12 for the Soviet. Mikulov is on the right wing. And Maltsev is on the left. Ragulin and Vasiliev, the defense playing up. Puck rolls at the defense. Clark cleared it out at center ice. Vasiliev shot it right back onto Goldsworthy's stick. The pass hits. Mikulov, who tears down with Mikulov, going in ahead of him. Mikulov went back to the net, nearly went down. Tried to pass back to the blue line. Ragulin shot it into the crowd. Ragulin number five. Dirty defense player for the Soviets. And again, the reserves come out. A three-all tie. 13-24 left in the third period. But they'll change at the 10-minute mark. They'll change hands as they usually do in international hockey. They play 10 minutes each way. Shadron is now at center with Yakushev on the left wing. Yakushev has been a constant threat. Over to Dennis Hall. He's out there with Rattel and Gilbert. Down the, the wing for Hull. On that left side is Rattel. Fired a shot. Gilbert went after the rebound. Couldn't get it. Hull shot went right off. Rutjak's leg. And the Canadians came close on that. Bill White kept the puck in there, but Gilbert is offside. Didn't have a chance to get in to the center area. This game appears to be opening up a lot more than it has in the first two periods. And... Team Canada is going to have to stick a little closer to their checks. They can't afford to send two men into four checks. On that last series, uh, they got trapped uh, in the Soviet end, and one man scrambled back just in time. A great three tie as a long shot goes to Trutjak, who just saw that in the last moment. Cleared on the board, clean off. Playing it back to Kuzkin. Kuzkin four at center. Shoots it into the corner, back to the net. Clean off. Rushes in, but is beaten to the puck. Uh, beat, 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 and a save there on Mihailov. 
on a Canadian error. Error. Here's a jamming session. And still there. And Lenoff uh, seemed to be mixing it up against the board there. Still bears up a race. Now that'll be, that means further penalties. There's Gil Bear, who's in on that scuffle. Bob Roth is getting the strategy starting to work. They've been able to capitalize on two Canadian penalties. Gil Bear is, hasn't gone off yet, but he will. Well, that's the second Canadian penalty of the third period. Gil Bear now going into the penalty box for Canada. And the Soviets will have the off-man advantage again, having scored two goals that way already. That could be a very costly move by Rod Gilbert because, of course, that check into Mihailov along the boards there behind the net was after the whistle. They called it charging. Seemed more like roughing on the play. 7.25 was the time of the Canadian penalty, the face-off in the Canadian zone. Here's Gusev getting a chance, passes to the corner, and right in front of the net, but right across to the side. Peter Mahovlich failed to drive it away. It's still in there. Siliev clearing it back, and Blinov, who's lost his helmet, fires it into the corner. Petrov is trying to find an opening. Still goes back and forth. Number 16, fake the pass. It hit Bill White, it rolled to the Soviet player, left there, and it's not cleared again. Soviets recover, back to Gusev. Here's the shot, it rolled in front, another chance, Petrov. Centered in front, a scramble. They're all around the Canadian goal, knocked off to the corner where Vasiliev shot it back to the net, Petrov. Knocked it to the other side. Still have the Canadians chasing after them there on these passing plays. There's a pass coming right back to Petrov. He picked the shot, nearly lost it. It went to the blue line and out. And the pressure is now off the Canadian team for the moment. 52 seconds left, or rather 58 seconds left in the penalty. Harry Sinden, uh, he wants to get out there to play. I think what Harry Sinden was upset about there is the fact that the Soviet player did go over the blue line and he wanted the puck to go all the way down to the other end. From the face-off, Canada still a man short. The puck is shot over the Canadian line. Waltsev going in back of his goal. Forced to the far side, getting it back to the blue line. Here's a shot, and it has trickled wide of the net on a deflection. It rolls to the side. Peter Mahovlich shot it out. Went off the Afghan stick. Yakushev cutting over on the right wing with Shadron. Now it's better. Over to Maltsev on the left side. That passing play again. Here's a pass in front. Yakushev shot that one. Esposito tried to clear. Finally shot to the side. The Afghan has it now on the board. Here they come in. Yakushev coming in front of the goal. Passes over the blue line. A shot. It went wide. And Esposito not getting too much protection as they scramble in front of him. Puck bounces back to the blue line. Now the Canadian team at full strength. There's a shot off to the side. They didn't get it out, though. Another drive, a sweet shot. And it seemed to bounce off the post. Hard to say. Finally, Canada clears the center ice as the Soviet put terrific pressure on. Yakushev goes over the line. The teams are full strength. Lichenko shooting it into the corner. Maltsev is stopped on the boards. Risi shot it back to the goal. Clark goes after it. They're jamming in on the side, and the siren goes to end the first 10 minutes. So they change hands. With the score, Canada 3 and the Soviets 3. This is game 7 from Moscow. From the face-off, the puck is shot in the Soviet zone. Clark going into the corner, trying to dig it out from the side. Henderson going to help him out. Ellis is in front, waiting for a pass. Mishikov fell. Balsev uh, falls against the, uh, holds it against the board, but not for long. Then gets jammed in against the board, and the play is finally stopped. With 
Clark ending up on his knee. 9.32 remaining in the game. 3-3 three 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 is the tie score. Henderson gaining by. Clark is now replaced by Peter Mahovlich at center ice. Pass back to Bergman who shot it into the crowd. So Peter Mahovlich is centering this line of Ellis and Henderson. So there have been a number of changes during the game. Mark has been working his heart out there and apparently was a little tired and getting relief for the moment. Bergman and Park, the defense for Canada. And they're starting to move the defense fairly well up. Peter Mahovlich uh, doing a little talking there. And he's facing off with Mishikov. Mishikov, a very sturdy performer. Now, Maltz have nearly went flying off Henderson's skate that time. Vasiliev going in back to the goal for the Soviet. Played it in front to Raglan. Raglan shot it up to the blue line. Here's a pass to Maltsev. He's coming in on the corner after Bergman had missed him. He's trying to center out. He does. Vasiliev plays it over on the wing. Raglan shot it. Mikhailov shoots. And Tony Acevedo came up for that one with the puck in his right glove on a great save there. And Tony Esposito has been one of the outstanding players, no doubt, for Canada. A good glove save here by Tony Esposito. He picks it right out of the air. Shadron parked again right at the top of the goal crease. Very dangerous area. Esposito makes a fine save. Ready for the faceoff to the right of the Canadian goal. A free all time. 8.59 remaining in the game. Canada to the right, Soviets to the left. Pass is carried by Gilbert. Park goes in to help. Gets it out, Gilbert racing after it. Kuskin gets back in time to recover. Played it over on the wing, Mihailov is turning now. Mihailov gets away from Park at center ice. Over the line, on into the corner. Blinov is over on this side in the corner. Blinov nine is given a jolt on the board. He's still being shoved around a bit. Puck didn't go out, so it went off his skate. Blinov tried to pass. Bergman cleared it off the board to center. Sagantov gets it to Mahailov, intercepted by Park. Another try for Gusev, turning at his own blue line. Over on the right side to center to Petrov. Petrov stopped. And the Canadian team breakout. Dennis Hall took a shot. And Kritschak had it caught there when it went way up in the air off his pad. So that Dennis Hall seemed going at him there with eight minutes, one second remaining. Canadian professional football will return to television Wednesday, September the 27th as the Montreal Alouettes are in Winnipeg. While on Saturday, September the 30th, the Toronto Argonauts host the Edmonton Eskimos. Check your local listings for the time and the station. Ready for the face-off. Here's a mix-up of Anderson being shoved around by Parisi. They keep sticking close to one another. Canada's had two penalties in this last period. Now a quick pass at center ice. The Soviets come in with Anderson passing in front. It's knocked out over the line. Soviets take over Shadron, getting it back to Lyapkin. Lyapkin, 25 on that left wing, shoots it into and to one side of the net. Esposito cleared to the corner. The bar failed to get it out. Soviets with Shadron forced into the corner, allowing Anderson to dig it out. Bill Esposito recovered, going down, cleared it over on the left side. Here's a shot by Esposito, was dead on. Into the corner for Cordoye, back to the net. They're trying to dig it out from the side, and the Soviets get a three-man break. Coming up fast in center ice. Anderson going in on the right side, gets turned around, lost the puck, and it was cleared out there by Parisi. Parisi, Cordoye, and Phil Esposito out there. The Soviets change their line again as they come over the line. Esposito stole that puck, lobbed it over on the left wing. Cornwaye gets it to Parisi, back to Esposito, golf one against the screen. Cornwaye tried to pass it out in front, was knocked over. 
The Soviets come racing up and lost perfect pass. And the Soviet player was set from behind. That looked like an offside as Mikhailov was going in, but they didn't call it. Down the left side for Kornwaye. He passed behind him. The Soviet player fell. Escondido gets in with a shot. It's blocked. Kept in by Savard. and came out and knocked in again offside. There's no way that that wasn't an offside. Uh, Foster Vikulov went in over the blue line, skating backwards, and he dragged the puck in. There's the uh, Soviet uh, sports announcer going to work on the boards there. And it's a three-all tie with 6-18 left in the game. Canada must win this one to stay in the hunt. Puck goes on the left side. Vikulov covering Paul Henderson. Now Pat Stapleton picks his way over to Henderson, trying to go in on the left wing. Clark took a whack at it. Soviet breakout and center. One man coming down. Balsev, right of speech, sure he stopped. Made the pass. Blocked by Henderson. Henderson sticks with him. And it's passed over on the far wing to Ellis. Ellis goes over the line. He's taken out of the play. Mishikov. It's forced back to the Soviet goal. Here's a pass in front of the net. A great chance there by, El uh, by Ellis. As the pass came out in front, he went after it. Had a backhand, but Petjak stopped it. It's the Soviets coming over the Canadian line as they loosen up here and open up in every way. They're jamming into the corner here. Henderson watching his man. Back to the blue line, back to Vasily. A long shot. Pat Stable and stopped it. Ellis racing on the right wing, gets the pass, goes into the corner with Vasiliev after him. He's draped on the board and holds it there for a face-off with five minutes and three seconds remaining in the game. Canada three, Soviet three. And a complete change of players. Two goals have been scored in this Third period, Gilbert from Rattel and Hall at 2.23. And at 5.15, Yakushev tying it up from Lopez. And Yakushev has scored two. And Phil Esposito has scored two for Canada. Puck goes sliding right down into the Canadian zone. They carry it over the line. Hart is trying to get loose. Clean off. Got that puck from him. Cleared right out of the Canadian player's stick. It's brought out by Rattel to center ice. Stopped by Petrov. Behind off to Petrov. Going in with Klinov on the right wing to the top side. 4.38 left in the game. A three-all tie. Canada three and the Soviets three. And they're playing desperation hockey. It's hard, but it has been went as fast as other games in the series to see the television cameras. All manned by Russian troops. A forward pass on the left side, rolls over the line, and Gilbert was unable to get loose. The Soviet sends three men back, carrying over the line, clean off, coming in back to the goal. He taken in on the board by Park, squeezed right out of the play. He failed to get out on the first try. Now Rattel, in front of his own net, is chased in back to the goal. Shot it on the board. It slides out at center. A race for it. Dennis Hull carrying into the corner with Kuskin blocking him. The pass is intercepted. It's knocked back on the side. Rattel lost it. And the Soviet break out again at center ice. Yakushev down the right wing. Four of them are up. Petrov getting in position. One man in front. There's a shot by Kuzev. Stopped by Esposito, they jam against the board. A real jamming section. Elbows go high. Here's Bergman shoving the referee. Now they're swinging at each other back to the net. And there's a real rumpus going on there. Everybody is shoving. Esposito's got Yakushev by the neck. Everybody's got a hold of every other person. And a few punches were rather tossed around a bit with Dingo. Stands back there. Yakushev uh, was given a headlock. And Gordwaye is threatening on the side there. And the crowd, uh, the Soviet crowd, are doing their usual whistling. And the Canadian 
stadium uh, were setting up quite a roar. It's a three-all tie with three minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the game. With the score, Canada three and the Soviets three. This is game seven from Moscow. Well, they finally uh, parted company down there. There's Peter Mahovlich. Y.A. just picking up uh, a glove that he's got the silly of number six standing beside him. Now he's left alone. He's the only one left. And the fan is uh, either talking to him. You see that mesh there, and it acts as a springboard for the puck. Every time the puck hits it, it bounces out about 30 feet. There's my high loft, who's in the penalty box. Number 13, and the, uh, they haven't assessed all the penalties yet. We'll make sure Mihailov is the first one in, but he won't be the last. Petrov is over there talking to both referees, along with Bill Esposito. Greasy is there, too. That's Bill Esposito, number seven. Rudolph Vata, 15, he's the check. Bill Esposito is uh, either getting a lesson in uh, the languages or it'll be roughing penalties like this, but uh, there wasn't an awful lot to it outside. It was uh, like some of the lining up you see over here in Moscow. Every time you do anything, you have to line up. And uh, players must be getting that idea because they certainly lined up there and a couple of them lined each other up. In the meantime, all the players stand around there by the penalty box, getting a larger crowd all the time. And Mihailov is the only one we, we know is going to get a five-minute roughing penalty. We'll see what happens to the rest of them. He surely can't be the only one. But it was really, uh, I don't think there were too many punches thrown. Bergman will likely uh, get the same kind of a penalty, and that'll likely be five minutes. So I guess uh, after all that uh, mix-up and uh, everybody seemed to get uh, a poke at somebody, it looks like Bergman will be off with the high loft, and they'll both be major penalties. So they'll be off for the rest of the game. And uh, they'll be five aside. Now Bergman is coming over to the penalty box now. And you'll hear the reaction of the Soviet fans. And then you can also hear the roar from the Canadian fans. Go Canada, go. Bergman in the penalty box, along with the high loft. Both five minutes for roughing. So after all that commotion, uh, two of them end up in the penalty box, 334 left. Sixteen twenty-six. The time of the double penalty. Yes, a double penalty for roughing. Five minutes major. 16-26 in the game. And the faceoff playing five aside. LaPointe plays it out to the center ice. Bill Esposito shot a long one at Kutchak. Sit in the corner for Parisi, who's fighting to get that puck out there. He still has it. Fighting with Lyapkin. Now Luchenko goes in back to the other corner. Dumped it out. And the Soviet in possession. With Shadron to center ice. On this right with Yakushev. A hot shot. It's bounced in the air when Esposito stopped it. Cleared to the corner. Canadians try to get that puck out. Failed on the first try. And it bounces off Parisi over the boards into the crowd. And Parisi and Phil Esposito 
Bill Esposito are telling the referees where the face-off should be. He's going to mark it inside first. Now they move it out. 2.50 left in the game. A three-all tie. 4.16 left in the penalty. So that means they're out for the game. So they'll finish up at least by the side. The face-off, the puck comes to center ice. Mikulov moving in on the right wing. Cuts in on the defense. Fool the point, but he came back there to cover him. From the left side, Maltsev is stopped. Henderson trying to break out on that wing there. Couldn't get the puck to behave. And the puck seat and the ice seems a bit sticky. A quick pass to Maltsev. Maltsev on the right wing. Makes a shot. Comes in front of the defense. A screenshot. And Tony Esposito was right there. The point made sure he gave the Soviet player a good jolt there who was standing near the doorstep. It was Mikulov. That was a good shot there by Maltsev. Maltsev has gotten more shots on the Canadian goal than any other of the Soviet players in this series. All set for the face-off in the Canadian zone. They're five of five. 220 left in the game, a three-all tie. Puck goes into the corner, LaPointe shooting it back to the net to Savard. Savard is trying to get out, lobbed it ahead. Henderson going down, got to the defense, goes right out of the goal, he scores! Henderson, right through the score for Canada. A beautiful goal by Paul Henderson. Henderson makes a beautiful move on this goal. And he's being mobbed by his teammates. But this is an absolutely beautiful move by Henderson. And the goal judge was a little slow in putting the light on, but there's no question that puck was right up into the top and the back of the net. And Tretjak really had no chance on that quick little maneuver by Paul Henderson. We can see Henderson move in here, and he just flips it right up top. Tretjak had no chance on it. Paul Henderson was the hero on that one. He made a beautiful play. He seemed to have Soviet players dragging him all the way. And now Canada takes the lead, four to three, with almost six left in the game. The goal was scored at 1754, and there were five of them. Now the puck comes into the Canadian zone. Rattel covers on the board. Lachenko is trying to knock it over. Petrov gets it. Took his shot wide. It bounces over to Liapkin. Liapkin took his shot. Knocked by Esposito. Canadian team carry out slowly to center ice. Rattel shot it into the Soviet zone. Liapkin going back. 138 left as the puck comes out in front of the other and Yakutov was stopped there by Esposito right in front of the net. Pat Stabelin breaks out for Canada to center ice. Going up with Ellis, and it's called offside. And Kretschak was knocked over by Ellis's shot, and he's lying on the ice. He jumped in the air, and he fell head first on that terrific drive by Ellis. This shot by Ellis doesn't hit Tretjak in the head, I'm almost sure of that, but it just about rips his shoulder off. A high rising slap shot. Tretjak takes it right up in the shoulder and the neck, almost identical to the one that Tony Esposito took earlier in the game. into the Soviet zone. Going to be close right to the end here. Yakushev going into the corner. Ball. Here the Canadian right in front. It was Pat Stapleton getting a chance. Worked back at the blue line. Played it to the corner. Esposito waiting for a pass. The absent stop at 58 seconds left in the game. With a minute left to go in the game here, Foster. The key to Team Canada is to hang on to the puck. Don't give the Soviets the puck in this last minute. And we saw Jean-Paul Parise fall down with the puck, and he smothered it for a whistle. Team Canada wants to gain control and hold on to it as much of 
this 58 seconds as they can. 58 seconds remaining in the game. Canada leading 4-3 on Paul Henderson's goal at 17.54 with Mihailov and Bergman in the penalty box. It's still five aside. Escondido knocks it to the wing. It goes to the corner. The Soviets starting back. Mikhailov is waiting for a pass from Maltsev. Maltsev falls all over himself. And now Vasiliev plays in a center ice. Maltsev over out of the wing. They're closing in. The puck is loose. Here's Maltsev shooting. And Esposito made the save. A pass is right under Vasiliev. It's partially stopped. Stopped again as Canadians throw themselves right at the puck. Mikhailov is stopped and the puck rolls out of center ice. 21 seconds left. Soviets on the move. Vasiliev. Over onto the far wing. Across the line for Gusev. Intercepted. White fail to clear it out. Here's another chance. The Dillon shoot. And again, Esposito stopped that one. It's off on the board. Mikhailov. Snared it back on the line. One second left. And the game is over. Canada has come through. With a tremendous struggle here. Esposito ended up on the ice. I believe more exhausted than anything else. The winning goal was scored in 1754. Paul Henderson getting it in tremendous style, just pulling his way right through to beat Putjak from close in. It looked for a long time as if it was going to be a real stalemate, but the Canadian team came through, and now they're still in the hunt with a glorious chance here to pull it out on the last game in Moscow. At the moment, they're shaking hands. It was a two-all tie at the end of the first period. There was no scoring in the second. And then in the third period, which is really dramatic, Gilbert scored from Mattel and Hall at 223. At 5.15, Yakutchev tied it up from Balsev. The Canadian Rooters are going wild over there. And then finally, Paul Henderson made a brilliant effort and he's been one of the stars of the whole series, scoring in 1754 to win the game for Canada. And it looked for a time as if Canada might blow it on the basis of numerous penalties in which the Soviets were able to score two goals while the Canadian team were shorthanded. Well, Boston, there's a look at Canada's two stars as selected by top Soviet hockey authorities. Bill White for his tremendous defensive play and Phil Esposito. They'll be receiving a miniature samovar and that'll be presented to them by the president of the Soviet Ice Hockey Federation, Yorgi Mozilov. And they get a tremendous ovation, a well-deserved one as they leave. Presenting the traditional rings that have been freshly designed for this series and presented by the CBC and CTV television networks along with the sponsors who bring you these telecasts with Mr. Silap, who is here as a minister from the province of Ontario. With the final score, Canada 4 and the Soviets 3, this is Game 7 from Moscow.